This cash game has been playing out for over 20 hours. The best in the business have taken their places at the field. Some have won big and some have suffered as exhaustion takes its toll. Now the stacks are getting bigger and as the world carries on outside, our players don't know whether it's day or night. There are plenty of challenges in the big game, battling your fellow pros, surviving the evictions, and resisting the lure of that ticking clock. Sam Trickett is racking up the hours. He's faced off the most aggressive around this table and survived. Andrew Feldman is one of the table's newest recruits and has started to turn a profit. Oscar Pardo may have beaten hundreds of others to take this seat, but the pace proved too much for the Swede. Thank you for the lessons and good luck. James Mitchell still trying to find his feet. But there's no doubting the man to watch, it's Viffer. He's been up, he's been down, and several other places, but he's always involved and has yet to face a vote. The most aggressive, always safe from eviction. Simon Munz isn't quite sure what's hit him, so much so that he's heading for the door. Neil Channing joins Viffer as the only other man to have stood the test of time. Phil Locke waited for his chance to join the action, and he's still really waiting for the big break that will take him firmly into the black. Looking at the table for the biggest winner, still dominated by Jennifer Tilly's early appearance at the table. Viffer's back up there. Channing has taken a drop, but is still looking healthy. At the other end of the table, Luke Schwartz left the most at this table. Simon Muntz still battling away, but really struggling to keep his head above water. Phil Locke's improving, but still in the red. One seat still to fill. Ellis Rubin set to take up the challenge. Unfortunately, Oscar Pardo has left the table, but that means we welcome a new player. It's Ellis Rubin. Ellis Rubin, known as the Rubinator in poker circles, Rubin is a huge cash player on the London scene and sure to make a mark around this table. The truth is I'm not really paying for the money, okay? Uh, not because I have a lot of money, but because it's, uh, it's exciting. I'm playing because of the challenge. And uh, I'll wait and see what happens. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a comparatively small game uh, from what I, I normally play. And uh, I think the players are going to be very cautious and, and therefore I've got to readjust my game to this um, and see how things go. You can buckle up your seatbelt because this is going to be a ride. He is known around the London high game circles, yeah, yeah, the big fine. game, the cash games, as one of the biggest winners and most feared action players. Uh, when it comes to high stakes, no limit hold them. Yeah, no, I'm excited to see this. I've only seen Ellis play in tournaments, and, and he was very impressive there. So yeah, yeah. Oh, should be very good to tune into. And he'll think these stakes are a little small. He'll think these stakes are way too small. I know he's coming in deep. And they call him, his nickname, the Rubinator. He's getting people He's doing all kinds of friends. He moves alter the dynamics of the table. So nobody's doing it, or you're doing it? Okay. Okay, oh, 500 a man. Oh, this is ridiculous. This is <laughs> he <laughs> loves it. I'm supposed it. to be I mean, the Godfather. Not you know, I oh, think uh, he's yeah, just yeah, trying to gain concessions here, Alice. He <laughs> absolutely <laughs> loves this. He'll love the do seven game. He's uh, just trying to get them to ask nicely. And uh, Channing's limped here for the hundred. Sam Trickett with the raise, oh. and. Uh, you know, months only on 3,500 or so. I don't know. He's kind of sunk no matter what he does. Yeah, the cards have really come around and walloped him in the last stretch of this. Um, 
Doesn't look like it's depressed him too much, but it is horrible when you just can't seem to catch a break. Channing mm. will be re-raising, is that what you're surmising? Oh, here? yeah, there's no way he wants to take a flop with two players. Right. I mean, this is great now. I mean, it, it's a limp raise, and it, and it looks hugely strong. Um, I think, you think? Call. I was going to say, Trickett might get away from it, but I guess he's looking at Channing's stack, looking at his own stack, and thinking, I've got the set mining percentages. And yeah. now the question's going to be, the immediate question that Channing's going to want to ask here is, can he re-raise? Um, 3,650. I don't think he can. Yeah. It's sort of an under-raise. 1650. Yeah, more. Good. I wonder if Chad is gonna gonna regret that. You know, had he had he raised slightly less, you know what I'm saying? He could have trapped uh, Trick it in there. Yeah. And then forced him out, but probably doesn't put Trick it on a pocket pair. Jack, Queen, nine. Not the best flop from Channing's point of view. The the ace is not matching up with that board which you probably can't really imagine how that could have missed trick it did, yeah but yeah no absolutely that's that's the hardest thing is thinking well all you know the, the range of hands that trick it could have wanted to get involved with here so many of them could at least give him a you know a, the king or the ace or something pretty juicy that, that will keep him in this hand and both these players so deep that Channing's heart's probably going a little pitter patter right now yeah I'm sure he'll be delighted if uh, Sam just gets out of this and he can go up against months and what is tricky what is tricky thinking sausage rolls i think <laughs> please what i hope i have some outs yeah do, do you have one pair or more one pair. i have one pair you have some outs well yeah, it's not a lot not a lot of outs i raise you that i have aces so i would have been in trouble oh, right. I don't, yeah. have a, I don't have a spin. Yeah, I know. It's a dirty flop, that is, especially yeah, yeah. It's if it's a dry flop. I nearly raised just then pinch your five grand. It's not a very good flop for me. I'm just scared in case you have like the ace of spades or the king of spades, you can just jam back. Simon Munce's run Nine, at eight. this game this come to an end. Flop, it's been lovely. Seven. Act Whoa. Wow. Speak of the Dervil. And a spade to chop. Well, you kind of you kind of feel that there's some vague justice in the world. It's multi-ironic. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's meta meta ironic. There's many levels of irony in there. The river saves Channing and denies months for the time being. More to come from the big game after the break. Welcome back to the big game. Over 20 hours down in this 48-hour cash game. I'm Joining me in commentary, I look Matt like I just been off for 200. New man at the table, Ellis Rubin, like, has changed uh, things around very slightly at this table. He is, after all, a man with a big reputation when it comes to cash games. Raise up to 500. I was so glad they had yeah, breakfast tea. What sugar? It's like six people or something. It's only 500 total. Pass. Way too much. 500 total. See, I told you how it works. <laughs> Isn't it? Does it feel to you all of a sudden like Ellis comes into the game, everybody starts picking up hands? Yeah, you know funny that, isn't it? It just comes in waves. All of a sudden, there's just lots of action inducing cards out there. All of a sudden, everybody's got pretty cards. A couple pocket pairs, a couple super connectors. Set over, set over straight. I see it. I feel it. I like it. With the back door flush draw. Ludicrously, with such a wide variety of cards to hit, it's just Viffa with the top pair. Yeah, and how to play it to the Ellis Rubin lead. But I mean, I great that Ellis is led out here, you know, get, totally gives us an idea of his intent. He's not going to sit back and wait for big hands and big connections. 
So we just saw Phil win it with the last hand just by being the player prepared to get his chips in. And here's Ellis. Yeah, and though he's drawing dead, sort of, Matt, he's got so many, I guess, possible bluffing cards. Yeah. 4,000. And, you know, Biffer, what can he be? Yeah, and it's a tricky one because to just call here, there's such a large number of cards that can come on the river that make the next decision so much tougher as well. And, and if you're convinced Ellis isn't going to back down, you've got to be prepared to face yet another bet on the river. And what I, what I love about this is that Ruben is already doing to Viffer what Viffer has done to everybody else, which is, yeah, be capable of putting in the double and triple barrel bluffs and putting guys under immense pressure with marginal hands. This is the Rubinator, and Viffer has been just Rubinated. <laughs> Does he get a t-shirt with, I've been Rubinated? There is one. Excellent. No, uh, Rubinator, uh, Ellis told me a story about how he got that nickname. Um, he used to be a bit of a wheeler dealer, and uh, people would come to him with sort of uh, buy and sell deals involving, uh, I think furniture and household goods and he would always uh, strike such a hard bargain Ellis they would leave and scratching their head and saying we've just been rubinated <laughs> hello I think things are about to get crazy yeah absolutely right first seven deuce we've seen since Ellis sat down and just with this game having so much action all of a sudden, the seven do such a trickier proposition to get yeah. through. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, obviously one of the ways to win with the seven deuce is to make the best hand. And, 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 and the other ways seem to involve not letting the pot get too big, Five, if you know what six, I mean. Four. Yeah. Because you want to make sure you got that big overlay in there of the extra 3,500. Well, this is fantastic because actually to now play through with the seven deuce actually becomes quite a legit hand. So you can kind of play it for the win and play it for the bluff. Trickett has bet this quite big. Yeah, I mean, Viff would be aware he's got months behind him, but luckily on this occasion he's got no hand to get involved with. And Viffer has already been involved one time tonight in a very expensive do seven gone bad earlier. I've forgotten about it against Neil Chen. I wonder if Viffer. I wonder if Viffer might just decide to keep this one a little small. Or is he better off bluffing? He's looking at this pot and thinking there's nearly seven grand in there. Yeah, I mean, maybe he's just saving his chips for one big shot at the end to try and clinch the deal. The fact that Sam has slowed right down will be encouraging. That's not a great river for him to carry on, but if Sam checks it round. Yeah, Viffer's going to have to bet this river. The, the, the question is, I guess, what's he representing? Does he care, and how much should he bet, Matt? Or, or just, just I don't know. I mean, he could be pushing out for sevens or pocket eights, or, you know, he could... He would have been more aggressive, wouldn't he, from the flop. So, I know. I mean, I guess the key thing from our point of view is we can see that he wouldn't need a huge amount to get Sam off this. Well, Trickett might actually feel like he's got no showdown value. This, he he thinks he's bluffing. He, he's got the best hand. This is yeah. a. One thousand seven hundred and fifty. That's a weird sort of bet. Is that a blocking bet? Uh, hello. Raise up to 8,000. Wow. That is some bluff. That is some bluff. And bizarre. You know, Trick if Trickett winds this down, what the heck does Vishal have here? Yeah, Sam's going to have a good think about this. You know, considering how, how apparently weak his hand is, he clearly smells something here. The board came out in such a weird way. It's like, what could Viffer be raising this much for value? And yet Trickett's hand is so darn weak. 
he can really only beat the seven deuce. You know, nothing at all. Mm. And I wonder if he might get slightly worried that there's some bluffs that beat him anyway. Jeez, this this would be this would be beyond sick. Queen Jack of Spades or something. No, yeah, okay, well. that's that's a possibility. It's a possibility. Might have gone for a bit of a smaller raise. A bit of a smaller raise with the Queen Jack of Spades. Yeah. That is the only thing that gives that hand a bit less credibility is the size of that raise on the end. It's gone from 1750 up to 8,000 pounds. But I don't think he's winding Viffer up here. No. He's no, really thinking the bluffs are a big part of Viffer's range, right? Absolutely. Yeah, no, he's not doing this for any other reason than genuine. And, uh, you know, Trickett's kind of playing a much bigger much bigger pot here than he realizes because if he folds here and the seven deuce gets shown he is so up for elimination a -raise. it's not funny yeah. he would almost be signing his own eviction warrant i just won't stand for it players at this table will not stand for him folding in the face of a seven deuce yeah he'll get plenty of pats on the back if he can call this it's not looking that way though is it they're not quite mucked yet. Wow. His instincts, his alarm bells are just twanging away. Wow! wow. You're good. Wow! Oh. That's Superb. Wow! <laughs> Look at <laughs> Phil Locke! <laughs> he, thinks he's just, he thinks he's seeing ghosts. He thinks he's seeing ghosts. That, that was a call for the ages. He has made his bones in this poker game, <laughs> Sam Trickett. Uh, I much prefer tournaments when you get to the deeper stages, um, but I do, I do like cash games. I think it's very much more skillful, uh, and I do enjoy, enjoy the spots you get in uh, post-flop. Channing's blown off about 12, 15,000 pounds right now. If you want to play the biggest pot possible at the table, it'll have to wage between Sam Trickett and Viffer. They could play a 100K pot, and with the history between them, it could easily happen. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're Viffer, you must be wondering what you've got to do to get something through Sam, because it was going back a few hands, still inspired stuff with the five. And this is brilliant, because just when everyone's thinking, how can you do that, suddenly you start picking up queens and pocket pairs, and no one wants to fight you. Ellison, like a lightning rod. He looks like somebody is well into this game. Re-raise, 800 bottles. This is strong stuff from the VIF, from the big blind, nonetheless. Two yeah. up to eight. Yeah, and he'll know that looks strong. Uh, who's going to do what? Months, we've seen them earlier. All, you wouldn't be beyond him to go all in here. It, it, he, that's the spot he chose earlier, wasn't it? Coming over the top of what he perceived to be a light differ <clears throat> squeeze. Yeah, there's a huge in number of people to get through though at this point, isn't there? It's, it, it can't be quite so easy. It has been in previous <coughs> spots where Mons has made that move. Yeah, he'd be betting about five grand to win 1,700. Yet the call seems. We raise 2,300 total. Right. Well, he's sticking with his plan. It's how he's played it so far. I, I'm surprised it doesn't feel like so so strong a spot to do that from. But he's sticking with his formula. 21 more. Yep. He's got them all like ten pins. I mean, it, it, everything it seems to be always based on a viffer read, and his viffer reads have been. 15 more. Viffer reads have been good. Yeah. Yeah, and Viffer once again wondering what he's got to do to to get something through here. Yeah, take it. Take a look at a flop here. Viffer's problem is he pays the 1500. Bunce has only got three grand back. And yeah. What what kind of flop is he looking for? Or do you just? Uh, it's 
Yeah, I mean, you, you could be in such bad shape here. As he knows it is effectively just going to get all in against months. Is, is A3 really what he wants to do it with? Or does he want to take a look at the flop? And that's a horrible, it's a horrible spot, which is why Munz has done it and he's picked his spot so well against Fifi. He's got to pass, doesn't he? I mean, if, if the only thing going through his head, I guess, is that he knows that Munz is capable of not having much here. But you could not have much and still Call. be destroying Viffer. I mean, what if an ace comes and Munz sticks it all in? Yeah, I mean, this is the Viffer of a couple of hours ago, isn't it? It was just lots of kind of... Three, taking six, flops and then four. missing and kind of fizzling out. Well, this is the perfect flop for Viffer. Yeah. I mean, bottom six pair was thousand. pretty much his hopes and his dreams. That's exactly what he's got. Yeah, there's not a lot, lot to cheer about here for months, is there? No, he's kind of played this well and gotten mm. boxed. This is... This is like the fourth or fifth time this exact thing has happened to him. He's made a move on Viffer. Viffer's gotten stubborn. And Viffer's slapped him. Silly. Pocket seven. <laughs> and now just going to guess random hands that They're still have his... They're both good if you haven't yet. King yes, high beat. Yeah, well... So you can be happy. You know, does he have the pot odds for six outs twice? Well, you know, on that kind of board, I don't think he, I don't think he thinks he does. There's something we can say he's a 21 percent chance, but the. Uh, Possibility that Viffer's got maybe some kind of hard draws, got one of his cards. I don't know. Could make a straight. Hearts. Pretty ugly flop. For yeah, there's just so little I positive cool. there. It's well, he's yeah, going outs. for it. Yeah, I think. He's going to cling on to his two over cards and just hope for I the think. best. Here. Do you have like ace, king, race, queen? Yeah. Nope. Um, then you have like six. You have a pair? No, oh. I had five, six of hearts. Okay, guys. Yeah, Rubinator would have had the five, six of hearts. And, well, the good news for months, this pot would kind of put him back in the fray. The bad news is he needs to hit now or later. Eight. Preferably now. Enjoying the last of the free water. No, he's not, he's not had much luck here in these situations, has he, in the, in the last few stretches? It's not been his night so far, but he, he might choose to go again because I think he likes this game. Well, he's not out of his depth here. He's been playing so well. He just keeps getting clobbered around the chops by the deck, and he, he just seems to get himself into these situations. He wins lots and lots of small pots and then has one big uh, heads up that doesn't go his way. Munts feeling the heat and finding no place to hide in the big game four. Welcome back to the big game. Sam Trickett, the big winner in this 40 hour cash game. Over 34K up. Rest left in his wake, although Viffer has made a remarkable recovery, while poor old Simon Muntz has really hit rock bottom. Will the eviction save him from any About more pain? Three. Super straddle over here of 200. 200 total. Race. Hello, here he comes again. Got the wind in his sails and he's off down the river. Is it. Did, tri did Trickett put out the live 200? Is that what happened or was it a race? Is it you, Phil? Uh, I, I don't know, actually, to be honest. I, I don't understand how we have the re raised to 625. It, it well, there was well definitely a live 100, and I think. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he did. No, well, no. yeah, he might have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He might have also been raised it. 
Seems unlikely, it's not really his play from that spot with a 7-8, but... 6, King, 9, Trey. That's a, that's a handy flop. It is. Eight fifty. And there's one thing Trickett's not going to do is fold. So, is it a good time to check to call or a good time to ring? <coughs> call. Can't get past you, sir. Tell you what, right now I'd be quite scared of Trickett if I was Three. Feldman, just because he's in such good form right now. It's yeah. like you just think if I try and bluff him. He's going to be on me like a rash. Yeah, having seen him make that, that call against Viffa, you've got to know that he is so super tuned in right now. You just don't want to risk getting into a fight without something. And I was going to say, if Feldman misses there, Trickett's pot. Now, Trickett might have been bluffing on anything here, right? So Yeah, yeah, he might have already made the decision that whatever comes down, I'm going to chuck out two, two grand of this. 2025. The perfect card, the nuts. Yeah, so just over 2k. And now Feldman can drool for a while for all kinds of different reasons. Yeah, I think he might let uh, Trickett stew for a while. I think Andrew's right to move quickly here before we've seen him take just a little bit too long deliberating until he gets to the point where he does nothing. So I think if he makes a move and makes it quickly. I don't know, it, somehow this hand wouldn't feel right without a big sigh. 2025. Has he raised it? Yeah. Wow, he called it. Nice call. He raised up to 6,000. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Not the best time to bluff me, Sam. He raised up to 6,000. I wasn't calling if I didn't hit the queen. <laughs> huh? I wasn't calling if I didn't hit that queen. Yeah. Feldman speaks the truth there. <laughs> it's obvious what I had. It's queen. I'll make a difference, oh, obviously. Not even, not even bothered. <laughs> 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 no, I'm not raising the Yeah, when you're 30 man. grand up, does it really matter? Raise me. Did you no. raise the river? Yes. Oh, I didn't know. I thought you called. Oh, no, I raised. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He didn't even realise there was a raise at the end. He thought he'd just been called down and munched. <laughs> 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 he certainly knew he was losing whatever those actions were. I'm sorry, Phil. You know, Feldman has sort of I'm sorry. clawed in on not only even but profit. The the kid's playing really well. He's he's the kind of guy you you watch him and you think, eh, what's he doing? <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Four player scene. Any hand can be a monster. <coughs> oh, that's true. Oh, interesting choice there oh, from one. Sam. 10, 8, 5, check. Wow. Some action cards. 800. Up and down in light of the uh, the flush possibility as well. Different. Just calling you with a top ten. Three players. Oh my god. Up there. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Trickett set the pace with his initial bet. Got a couple of callers. Be interesting to see if he can keep going here. Because otherwise, I think Viffa's not going to sit back on this spot. Ah. Oh. Surprised by that, really. 
Yeah, what is up with that? Is Viffer worried about chatting? Don't know. Strange. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely surprised he didn't just, just get in there before. You know, while there was still a card for people to dream about hitting, maybe just wanted to wait until it was a done deal, but unlikely to get much more value out of it now. Well, 2000. It'd be really hard for Channing not to call here. I mean, the three didn't really change anything. Nothing. Oh. Channing could beat anything he could beat on the turn, he could beat now. Yeah. And if he was beat on the turn, why didn't Viff or Bet? These are the kind of things he's probably thinking about. Calls. Ace 10. That's good. On. Yeah, surprised he didn't he didn't get the bet out there when it was uh, safer, but a couple more cards came down, didn't hurt him. And as you said, it's going to be half a Channing not to pay him off in that spot as well, so it all adds up. Channing doesn't look like he's going to give up his 30-odd uh, grand too easily, but we know Viffer is more than capable of getting to a big pot. They've played a couple big pots already, and Viffer's looking at Sam and thinking, I'm going to get you, and Sam's looking at Viffer and saying, I'm going to get you. Months look like he's about to make one of his trademark random moves. Funny. Luke, Luke, Luke is coming back later. He has a pocket full of euros. Right? And he wants to change him to playing the game. Okay. What kind of, oh. what kind of money do they use in... Uh, Three nice big premium-ish hands into the action. And Ellis decides to represent some of the lesser cards in the deck. <laughs> Five for 300 apiece. Yeah. And the, the aggressor's been Viffer. Every chance that somebody's going to hit this in a reasonably seven. large way. Well, that's uh, Ellis vindicated with his his anticipation. Tre, tre. See if he can. Tre, tre. Oh, no one fancies. Uh, I'm going to go at this just yet. Or a six of diamonds. It 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 seems like. A couple times now, Ellis has tried to get somebody else to bet his hand for him. It hasn't worked. He's been forced to bet it himself. And as long as he's betting the draws in the middle, he'll be pretty well balanced. A lot of outs here for Rubinator. The three, the eight, the heart. Might be some bluffing outs as well. Not really sure. Fine. Good card for Mitchell. It's been a while since Mitchell made anything at all. Yeah, and Ellis just knows it's time to give up on that. And having recently given uh, James Mitchell a prod about getting involved in the game, I'm pretty sure Ruben's going to give him uh, all credit. Twenty-six fifty. Or is he? Yeah. Well, there's been far and few between for James Mitchell. However, I think he's just cracked the even mark. This kid is definitely worth the wait. And that's how he paid feels. like 600, though. Guys at the table stretching from 30,000 pounds ahead to 20,000 pounds below, Matt. Yeah, I mean, Simon Munz has just taken beating after beating, and he keeps he keeps bringing more chips to the table to try and fight back, but not having much luck at the moment. Well, that's interesting. I thought that might be playable for Andrew because he's been he's, he's been disappointed by the last kind of dozen hands. He's had lots of queen fives and ten threes and junk, and you wondered if the ten nine might have been considered worth the plot. You know, I mean, Feldman and Channing, in, in, they have a bit of controversy, a bit of needle in history between them, and yet uh, there's something similar about their styles of play. 
in that both of them have sort of give the illusion of action where actually they're very careful about yeah, the getting the big bets in. Now? Yes. Let's make this one up. Yeah, absolutely. As, as, as Channing sticks in the money with the seven deuce. Yeah, well, that's, that's a hugely profitable move as far as he's concerned, I'm sure. If Locke makes an all-in move here, should he do? It's the kind of thing he's done before to Channing in a similar kind of spot. Channing knows it. He appears to be building a stack of all in this. It's going to work. That's a manly bet. <laughs> That's what I call a manly bet. A Respect. Burly. I'm tired, you know. Burly pile I've lost my I don't know what I'm doing. You get respect. Don't take your tiredness out on me, baby. <laughs> you get respect from Ellis. You've got respect. It's a Neil and Phil personal thing. You've got history. Is Channing sick enough to call this knowing that he needs a miracle? Well, he'll do the math uh, first. Dealer, could you do me a favor? Dealer, <coughs> take 21 here okay. and just scoop it in the middle. Put it in the middle. Of the, okay. the math is the not 7,000 to win 11, Matt. The math yeah. is 7,000 to win that plus 3,500. So he's getting just over 2 to 1. Does he, does he fancy that price? If Locke flipped his cards over, dare say Channing might call. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. And, and there's got to be a huge, a huge number of hands in the range that, that Locke would do that with. That actually, Channing can feel like that's where he is. But obviously, there are also hands that he might be struggling against. Well, you know, he's. If it's a pocket pair higher than sevens, obviously he's he's. In, Bad, bad shape. He's got the price for any two over carts, I think. And if it's a pair like sixes, five, fours, or threes, what is this? he's not like in horrible shape yeah. as far as the price goes. Yeah. He's gone for it. And Wait, you get 200 change, right? 300. Look at this. <laughs> the table's all rooting for Locke. Yeah. Massive sweat. Never been so supported by his table as right now. Oh, so he gets 200 rebates? 300. 300. 300. It looks, yeah. it looks like a strange yeah. call, yeah. Well, but... Boards. I want to see your hand first. Well, I'm, well, I'm beating him. They, they, they can't... Well, I don't I think they can, can run, run two oh, boards here. Uh, Do you want to run two boards? <laughs> no, because I have to win the... Uh, he has to, to win it all to get the... Okay, one board. Yeah, that's what Channing's saying. He's got to get the price. If I don't win this... Yeah. 6-9. I thought he had two okay. seven. I don't know. Just, uh, well, why would he make it twenty-one hundred? <laughs> <laughs> he does. Cool, he does have two like seven, Phil. So yeah, yeah, for those of you just tuned in, you're watching sometimes. the big game. Yeah. <laughs> Do seven that's against six off. nine off. There's the six. That's a that's a big card for the for the table. <laughs> they all you're ruining for oh, the seven. Self. Will the seven will get a groan Didn't from the like crowd? How does it feel, Neil, to have I everyone just, against you? I thought you were beating both of us, so. It's not over yet, bro. Ten. Oh, man. Ten, 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 ten would be oh, good. No, no ten wouldn't do it. Oh. Six. Full house. <laughs> no. Full house? Yes, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Winner. The 2100 thing, it's just too suspicious. He only does that with the weekend. Cool. Yeah. I have to cool. Cool. Put that in the poker. can't do the move because I have to call. Hey, me good odds to call. Trick it. Let's get that in the poker. Mark has basically got himself even on... It, it was either the greatest play in the world or a complete car crash, as Neil Channing says. <laughs> Phil Locke's aggressive play denying Channing the magical seven deuce winning hand in the big game four. Welcome back to the big game. Over 21 so hours down, heading towards the halfway stage. Is that what they call it? <laughs> yeah, about that. 100 to play. This hand, I make <laughs> money in the long run, boys, by folding these sorts of hands. That's how I show a profit. 100 to play. That Trick it, Learn rocking that play ever so slightly. I've been awesome. feeling a little card dead, but... Maybe he's On just that hand, that particular hand. Okay, race to 300. Three. Yeah, I'm raised pot. Opportunity for Alice to come in. The hand's not brilliant, but it's good enough for that spot. Cool. It's pro 
Come on, coming. And the, the, the pre-flop play has been quite sort of straightforward lately. Raise, call, 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 call. Check. I think this Check. would have been a good flop for my hand. Okay. You know where the aces and sixes? I don't mind the aces and jack. That would have been much better for me. Check. The spades come in to play now. They certainly do. Uh, a couple more connections yeah. for the, the straight draws. Okay, 900 is the total bet. I mean, this would be dreadful for months if he makes this. It just seems every time he, he must think, right, here's an opportunity, let's grab hold of it. Someone else has got the next best uh, um, draw. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if Channing might just pass here. He's Maybe the maybe the maybe the flush draw is just too big with the straight draw as well. Yeah, I think I think without the straight draw in there as well, maybe he doesn't want to get too involved in a four-way. Wow. But but the situation now, of course, if Muntz misses, two players. If they both miss, and Muntz can find the next barrel, he could win. Wow. Mm. It's horrible, isn't it? It's just horrible to keep seeing this happen to a, to a guy who really doesn't seem to be doing anything wrong. I'm telling you what, the expiration date on his can of tomato soup has been up for ages, and they've just opened. He's got seven left to play with. Three grand in there. <laughs> this is so ugly. This poor guy. No, it's just not fair, this is it? This poor guy. Yeah, it's not right. Okay, 2,100. Nice young chap, good poker player. He just keeps getting walloped in the face. Well, he's he's got 5,000. It seems, yeah, it, it, yeah, exactly. Here you go. Here you go. Oh, well, he's going to sit back and no, think about fine. this, yeah, but... Total. Okay, but put that in the middle before the you do anything. It doesn't really matter a piece because of he has string. that. So. Yeah, but I could have bet a zillion. It doesn't matter. Mm. At some point, he's just gonna. Ha it's gonna have. He's gonna have had enough. Just and 10, if he calls here, I think he'll have had enough. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's there's valiant efforts at comebacks, and then there's just accepting that maybe today is just not not gonna get any better for you. And it's a shame because. You know, at the beginning of this session, he, he really was firing. He just it's constantly getting beaten down. Two, two, five, total. You know, he, if Channing's raising for value, Channing has him beat. Is Channing capable of bluffing here? And how unlucky would he be to find like another guy with a higher flush when he's hit a flush and a head up pile on the river? Back door. That's, that's what's given him a headache. Why did he decide to come down to the Les Ambassadors Casino this morning? Yeah, it's got to feel a bit like that, hasn't it, at this stage? Channing will work for this call. He doesn't mind. He doesn't mind doing the work in the trenches, Channing, uh, right here between. I mean, the, the problem is there's, there's not much, there's not really much you can come to. You know, you can spend as long as you want, but you, you're not in a nice place. That's, oh, that's, that's class. That, that, was, that is. That, I will see later. That was, and this guy is nearly stuck 30,000 pounds, and he's gotten away from a backdoor flush on the river. Yeah. I had the second look. No, that's, that's impressive. Okay. And I made a sick fool. That is just yes, you did, Simon. And you know what? You're still gonna go bust in this game because it's just not your day. Oh, how unlucky is that? That's that's the pain of this game, Matt. Absolutely, but looking at him, is you know, he doesn't seem to be taking it too to heart, which is half the game. But that is a stinker. It's time for another eviction here at the big game. 
Players exempt from this voting are Ellis Rubin and, once again, the most aggressive player, David Biffer. Please cast your votes now. <coughs> Which way does the camera look at it? <laughs> Time's up. Sam Trekhead, seat one. Once again, you are safe. <laughs> Andrew Feldman. It might be you. Alice Rubin. You're okay. I'm so I'm safe. I've got seven kids. I'm definitely safe. James Mitchell. You are also safe. Once again, David Wither, you are the most aggressive player. You remain. Thank you. Simon Munt, unfortunately, it could be you. No sweat. Neil Channing, you are safe. Phil Lack, you are also safe. So that leaves us with. Simon Munt and Andrew Feldman. Can I get a bet? Can I bet on who it is? And I can reveal that the next player to leave the table is. Why is she looking at me? Simon Munt. Wow. That's what we're Oh, wow. Simon Munt out with his own explanation of that vote. I'm in shock. I think some players. Uh, don't like to play against aggressive players, and so probably that's why they voted me out. And um, I asked Neil Channing, for example, and he said, "Yeah, he just wanted to have Tony G on his right, and that's why he voted for me." <laughs> Months out, taking that seat, the one and only Tony G, who specializes in getting into his opponent's minds. Expect more of the same. I'm best known for giving people a hard time and uh, making them tilt it up and dunking off their chips to me. Tony G about to ride into the biggest cash game in town. Plenty waiting there to welcome him. They've seen plenty come and go as the clock ticks down in the Party Poker Big Game 4.